As we come to the Lord's table this morning, I'd like to learn from David. So if you could, go ahead and turn to 2 Samuel chapter 12. As you're turning there, I'll remind you of the story of David and Bathsheba. And if you don't have a Bible, there are men here that would love to put one in your hands. Just raise your hand and they'll bring one to you. And then um, we'll look at 2 Samuel chapter 12. If you don't own a Bible, this is yours to keep. So before we get to Samuel 12, remember that David at one point was home alone during a battle. And he noticed a married woman across the way and chose to commit sexual sin with her. He decided it was time to cover that up. And that cover up ultimately led to having her husband killed. He fathered her child and took her as a wife. And then we come to one of my favorite stories in scripture. I often think of Nathan in this story. Have you ever confronted another believer who was in sin? It was hard, wasn't it? Thinking through how to bring it to them, how to make sure that you were presenting God's word well, worried about what their response was, but you knew that you had to show love to them by bringing that sin to them. This was Nathan, and yet he was bringing a sin to the king of Israel, who he knew had just had someone killed to cover this sin up. Um, Nathan had boldness that I'm not sure I have. And in that boldness, we're going to read that interaction. Let's pick it up in verse 1. Then Yahweh sent Nathan to David. Pause for a second. David thought his sin was hidden, but no sin is hidden from Yahweh. Yahweh decided to bring conviction in David's life through Nathan. What an amazing gift. Let's keep going. He came to him and said, There were two men in one city, the rich one and the other poor. The rich man had a great many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb, which he brought and nourished. And it grew up together with him and his children, and it would eat his morsel of bread and drink of his cup and lie in his bosom, and was like a daughter to him. Now a visitor came to the rich man, and he was unwilling to take from his own flock of his own herd to prepare for the traveler who had come to him. Rather, he took the poor man's ewe lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Then David's anger burned greatly against the man, and he said to Nathan, As Yahweh lives, surely the man who has done this deserves to die. And he must make restitution for the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing and had no compassion. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel, It is I who anointed you king over Israel, and it is I who delivered you from the hand of Saul. I also gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your care, and I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added to you many more things like these. Why have you despised the word of Yahweh by doing evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the sons of Ammon. In God's grace, he helped David not only understand his sin in this passage, but understand the depth of it. He was now able to see the injustice of his sin and was exhorted for it. In those verses where he talked about how he was anointed king over Israel, God was saying functionally, I gave you everything you could ever want. And if you could have wanted more, I'd have given that to you as well. But instead, you took something that I did not give you. It wasn't enough for David to have everything that God gave him. And so that's why in verse 9, God says, Why have you despised the word of the Lord by doing evil in his sight? Nathan goes on from here to, to detail how God will punish David for that sin. And David responded in verse 13. Look at it with me. He says, I have sinned against Yahweh. This wasn't just a sin against Bathsheba. It wasn't just a sin against Uriah. 
he sinned against Yahweh. David did not say, I sinned horribly. He did not compare what he had done to others. He did not look at adultery and murder and think, well, those were the big ones. My sin got out of hand. Now I need to repent. He looked at the Lord of the universe and said, I have sinned against you. Psalm 51.4 says, Against you and you only I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. David understood who he sinned against and that God was justified with any punishment for that sin. In fact, let's go to Psalm 51 very quickly. This psalm is sweet because we're told that this is David's response to the situation in 2 Samuel 12. It's a gift from God to be able to see um, David's response clearly in Psalm 51. I'm not going to go through the whole psalm, but I would encourage you to spend some time in this psalm this week, um, especially as you reflect on your own sin. Use this psalm as a template to shepherd your own heart towards repentance. But what I want to look at, it starts in verse 15. O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice, otherwise I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. You're probably wondering why 2 Samuel and Psalm 51 are the time, the passages I picked in our time to remember Christ. I did that because of what Christ did at the cross, what he revealed to us at the cross, and what repentance truly looks like. We get a template of repentance from David and an opportunity for us to put our faith into practice by using his template in our own lives. What God ended up doing with David was truly amazing. God was completely gracious to David. He sent Jesus to the cross to take the punishment for him. God showed more loving kindness than we can imagine by sending his son Jesus to that cross in David's place. God washed David's clean of his sin by sending the perfect high priest in Jesus to the cross. And what God did at the cross was phenomenal by fully answering every aspect of David's plea in Psalm 51. And God did that for us as well. If we put our faith and trust in Jesus, he will wash our sins clean. As we come to the Lord's table this morning, we need to reflect on the depth of our sin before a perfect and holy God. And remember the breath of God's loving kindness when he sent his son to the cross. If you do not put your faith and trust in Christ and his death on the cross, we're so glad you're here. We'd love to talk to you after the service. There will be people over here that would be happy to pray with you and talk to you. There's people at the information table. Grab me after the service. We'd love to talk to you. But this time is a time reserved primarily and exclusively for those who put their faith and trust in God. And so please let the bread and the cup pass by so that we can worship God as he commanded us. Men, please come forward and you can take your communion on your own today. I will come back and close our time in prayer.